Overnight, a reporter for the Al Jazeera network was shot and killed while covering an Israeli raid in the West Bank. MTS Tayab is tracking the latest developments for us from London. MTS, uh, it's always sad when a journalist dies in the field. Uh, reportedly, this journalist was wearing one of those familiar blue flak jackets. It said press clearly. Uh, good morning. What else? Wearing a blue flak jacket and a helmet, for the record. And the reason why the helmet is important in this situation is because she was shot by a sniper in, in the head, is what the what the first-hand accounts are stating. Now, um, of course, as we've talked about time and time again, as, uh, as we have talked about time and time again, if you just listen to the first 19 seconds of this, you're like, well, by who? They make it seem as though like a stray bullet was just flying on its own. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows where that bullet came from? You know, bullets that are just uh, naturally. Bullets that are basically naturally flying around uh, in that region. That's just how it is. That's where the natural territory of bullets are. Um, well, according to the, the first-hand accounts and according to the on-the-ground coverage from humanitarian aid groups, this was the Israeli occupying forces that actually shot her and killed her. What else do we know? Tony, good morning. Well, what we do know is Shireen Abu Akhla set out early this morning to cover an Israeli raid in the town of Jenin. Now, a warning here, some of the images are distressing, but she can be seen wearing a helmet and body armor that was clearly marked as press when she was shot. The journalist next to her here said they were targeted by Israeli forces. Now, Abu Akhla's employer, Al Jazeera, said the veteran reporter was, and I'm quoting here, assassinated in cold blood by Israeli forces. Israel's prime minister called the death unfortunate and blamed it on Palestinians, claiming they were, quote, firing indiscriminately. Yeah, um, the claim is that, so the claim basically is that uh, the immediate claim from Israeli authorities was that this was, uh, this was actually the Palestinians that were shooting at them. Uh, they also came out with a video, a video that isn't even near the actual site where this incident was well documented. Like, this is literally filmed. They, they have it on camera, Right. And um, and in that situation, they uh, for any Americans who don't know her, it's basically like killing Anderson Cooper. She was such an important journalist in the Arab world. Yes, this is a person that has been covering the plight of Palestinians for Al Jazeera uh, in the Arab world for a very, very long time. And yeah, Betsalem, which is a humanitarian organization on the ground, immediately went in and actually fucking... Uh, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories, but, uh, am I saying it right? Betselem? Anyway, they, they uh, went in and, and uh, basically fucking showed that uh, the, the Israeli government was lying. And they used Palestinian accusing Israel and Israel accusing Palestine. What's next? It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, who's accusing what? You have to literally look to the facts of the matter. I mean, there is a yeah. There's someone. There's someone who was right there. The soldiers let um, the soldiers let them walk through and then shot them. There were actual journalists who were with her who have been shot. It's on video, and yet. The Israeli government still had the gall and the capacity and the audacity to just straight up fucking say, no, it was actually Palestinians that shot her. There was indiscriminate fire from Palestinians in that area. Okay? Her partner who was also shot, her partner who was also shot, it, it said that they were on the lookout for Israeli snipers as well. According to a reporter accompanying Shireen, when she was shot, she was not only wearing a press vest, but also a helmet. The reporters were facing the Israeli snipers. There is no way they mistook her. They hit Shireen where her head was exposed in order to kill her. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to show you, wait, the uh, Electronic Intifada actually uh, uh, did a decent coverage on this. Hold on.
they finally, when they are not no longer fucking talking about Ukraine for once, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, thank God. <clears throat> they are a little. I mean, as much as I like the Electronic Intifada, their coverage on their coverage on the Ukraine stuff has been a little fucking a bit much. A bit, like, you know. A lot of people say I'm, you know, pro Russia or whatever. But like, uh, anyway, it, it's unrelated to the circumstance. Let's. Okay. So the Al Jazeera correspondent Shireen Abu Akleh was fatally shot during the Israeli raid in the occupied West Bank early Wednesday morning, causing shock and anger across Palestine and the wider region. In a tragic and deliberate crime that violates all international laws and norms, Israeli occupation forces assassinated in cold blood our correspondent Shireen Abu Akleh, the Qatar based network said. Israel initially blamed the Palestinians for Abu Akleh's death but later walked back those claims. Her death was announced by the Palestinian Health Ministry shortly after video circulated online showing her limp body being carried into a car and evacuated. The veteran correspondent was hit by a live bullet on Wednesday while covering the Israeli raids in the city of Jenin and was rushed to the hospital in critical condition, according to the ministry and Al Jazeera journalists, the network's English language website reported. Abu Akhlek is a Palestinian with U.S. citizenship. Remember, she also has a U.S. citizenship. Uh, as well, was wearing a press vest and a helmet when she was killed, and she was 51 years old. Uh, Shirin Abu Akhlek's colleague and eyewitness who was standing right by her described how an Israeli sniper directly targeted her. They were both very, like I said, I'm going to repeat this one more time. They were both wearing press jackets and helmets, as you saw in that video. Um, Shirin was shot near her ear where the helmet didn't cover. It was a shot of extreme precision. A second journalist, Ali Samudi, was shot in the back during the same incident and was reported to be in stable condition. In interviews from his hospital bed, Samudi insisted that the journalists had been deliberately targeted by the Israeli forces and there was no fire from Palestinians at the time towards the Israeli soldiers. Samudi said the journalists were in an open area and would have been clearly visible to the soldiers. He said he could not see any Palestinian fighters or even civilians in the area, only Israeli soldiers. We were going to film the Israeli army operation and suddenly they shot us without asking us to leave or stop filming, Samudi said. The first bullet hit me and the second bullet hit Shireen. There was no Palestinian military resistance at all at the scene. Shatya Hanaisa, another journalist who was right next to Abu Akleh, also said there had been no confrontations between Palestinian fighters and the Israeli army and said that the journalists had been targeted. Now, the reason why I'm covering this Obviously, because I, I cover stuff like this all the time. You know, I covered when uh, a, a American journalist was uh, executed in, uh, in Ukraine. But the reason why I'm covering this with this level of thorough uh, eyewitness testimony is because, like I mentioned, the immediate fucking reaction was from Western media to declare that, like, use passive language, the immediate reaction from the occupying forces and their defenders was to uh, say it's actually the fucking Palestinians that shot them. So I want to make I, I want to make sure that you understand, like, there is no. There is no like, uh, oh, I don't know, well, in the fog of battle, like what happened? Like these are journalists and this was better documented than even the American journals that was killed in uh, Ukraine. Like there is enough information coming uh, that, that it, is, it is very difficult to, to muddy the waters here in the same way that, once again, the Israeli occupational forces tried to. Okay. Now, Israel immediately acknowledged that its soldiers were in the Jenin refu refugee camp and looking for what it calls terror suspects. Near daily raids by the Israeli occupation forces across the West Bank regularly result in injuries and deaths among Palestinians. This has been ongoing for some time now. But Tel Aviv immediately went on the offensive, denying responsibility for Abu Akleh's death. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett issued a statement that I'm going to show you now. Okay? Issued a statement uh, that according to the information Israel has gathered, uh, it appears that likely uh, it appears likely that armed Palestinians who were indiscriminately firing at the time were responsible for the unfortunate death of the journalist. Now they put a video out there as well. Bennett based his claim on this video that was shot by Palestinians and shared on social media. In the video, Palestinian government say, "We hit a soldier. He's lying on the ground." Except 
this area is it this is such a shit job that one it was mistranslated and two the area that they're showing here there's no body there's no body whatsoever in this video and the area that they're showing here is not even anywhere near the actual fucking uh, where the actual shooting happened okay Bennett said no Israeli soldier was injured in the clashes and claimed this increased the possibility that Palestinians were the ones who shot the journalist. Bennett added that Israel called on the Palestinians to conduct a joint pathological analysis and investigation, which would be based on all the existing documentation and findings in order to get to the truth. So far, the Palestinians have refused this offer. Now, you might be wondering why Palestinians would refuse this offer. Because time and time again, time and time again, Uh, Israel has uh, done things like this and then turned around and fucking used it as an opportunity to just straight up lie. Uh, time and time again, when uh, Israeli occupational forces, occupying forces have killed nurses, journalists, children playing uh, you know, soccer, children throwing fucking rocks or whatever the fuck, they regularly will use this in every opportunity to like still vilify the person, straight up call them a terrorist, and then when it comes out that they're not, they're like literally a fucking nurse and it's like very clearly and well documented, they'll turn around and go, well, they were just using them as a body shield. As a body shield. This is a body shield that, uh, you know, the, the Hamas organization was using, um, you know, a nurse or a journalist as a body shield. Remember, this is the same occupational, uh, this is the same occupying force, the bloodthirsty uh, occupying force that has also bombed the Associated Press building in the uh, uh, in the Gaza Strip. So, you know, it's not the first time that they've done stuff like this. Uh, the most moral army, my fucking ass, okay? <sighs> now, breaking new information, of course, when it immediately came out that because uh, Betzalem uh, conducted a, an in investigation to... to very quickly uh, vilify this uh, and, and very quickly uh, show the real accounts on the ground. Uh, they had to backtrack it. But before that, uh, let me just tell you, the video does not show any shooting or any person who has been shot. The context, a narrow alleyway, looks very different from the open area where Abu Akhtik was shot. It is unclear even if it refers to the same incident. The Israeli foreign minister shared another clip showing a man firing an automatic weapon in a narrow alleyway, and the ministry repeated the claim that the Palestinians were firing indiscriminately and are likely to have hit uh, Abu Akhlek. The subtitles in the foreign ministry video do not match its audio, but appear to be taken from the video shared by Ravid. So they didn't even fucking, they like did a, a shitty ass edit job. They didn't even do a good enough job. Okay. Can't wait for Ben Shapiro and others to defend this and victim blame. No, they won't. They won't even cover it. If it reaches uh, peak volatility, okay, and people start talking about it, then maybe they'll cover it and say, why did none of you talk about all the terror attacks that occurred in Israel? Uh, why do you only care about it when Israel retaliates in self-defense and ends up murdering a journalist in self-defense? Um, and that uh, you're anti-Semitic and also acts of anti-Semitism are increasing uh, in America because you keep covering Israel's uh, war crimes. Okay. Um, now, the Israeli army shared the same video. Nothing in either video appears to connect them to the death of Abu Akhlek. Israel's immediate goal appears to have been to blow enough smoke to avoid damaging headlines and sow doubt about what happened. Now, of course, now, of course, what did Western media do, though? What did they do? Well, they immediately fucking took that hook, line, and sinker. They took that hook, line, and fucking sinker. They either, A, used passive voice, okay, when talking about it, like, a bullet traveled into the head of uh, Al Jazeera journalist, or literally fucking straight up took the, pal uh, the, the Israeli line on it. Israel's defense minister says he's very sorry for what happened and promised a thorough investigation of the killing of Al Jazeera reporter Shireen Abu Akhlek. Benny Gantz has asked that the Palestinian officials hand over the bullet that killed her. And for the record, it's happening, yes, on a fucking raid on UN-recognized Palestinian territory. Like, that's where the, that's where the assassination happened. Um, that was one thing that they said. Uh, another, another incredible fucking line was when, uh, you know, when, when it first, when it originally happened... 
When it originally happened, uh, the, the first reaction from mainstream media to this was, of course, to use passive voice. And I, I uh, pointed that out. And immediately, of course, people were like, oh, dude, fuck you. Uh, you don't know. Why are you jumping to conclusions? Well, because I fucking saw the video. Here it is. Hold on. I posted about this last night. I said, this is insane. I said, it was the idea of the shot and killed this Al Jazeera journalist. Might be hard to figure out from the passive language and the headline from Associated Press. This was the first headline that came out. Shireen, Shireen Abu Akleh, a journalist for the Al Jazeera network, was killed by gunfire in the occupied West Bank, the Palestinian health ministry says. The shooting happened during an Israeli army raid in Jenin. Now, this is 100% deliberate. This, there's a reason for it. I mean, they deleted this awful propaganda whitewashing the Israeli apartheid regime's execution of a journalist. Yeah, Forbes came out with a tweet saying uh, that uh, a well-known reporter died after being hit in the head by a bullet, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Died by being hit in the head with a bullet. Where did the bullet come from? Naturally occurring bullets. It's just a, it's a wonder, you know, you gotta, you gotta be worried about that. Naturally occurring bullets. Just a, a bullet that it's like hail, you know what I mean? You, you hate to be in a bullet storm. You hate to be caught in a bullet storm. Israeli human rights group. Now we're going to talk about that. Bet Selim. Uh, said its field worker in Jenin documented the exact locations of which the Palestinian gunman depicted in a video distributed by the Israeli army fired, as well as the exact location which journalist Shireen Abu Akleh was killed. Based on its investigation, the group concluded that the video of Palestinian gunfire distributed by Israeli military cannot be the gunfire that killed the journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. So we're going to watch that now, okay? So let's take a look at that. Hopefully there's no TOS in this because, you know, there's usually some... Uh, there can be a little bit of terms of service violations in here, but here, location of the, here it is, location of the Palestinian uh, firing in, in the video distributed by the Israeli army. This is where that video was. This is the hallway, like this is the alleyway. Hold on, let me just like scroll through this real quick to make sure that I have. No, this one is uh, safe for work. Okay, so this is the alleyway that the uh, I I the Israeli. This is the. Yeah, this is the alleyway that uh, the Israeli occupying forces said were like or showed the video from. That's the alleyway where the like, shooting. The video where they, uh, the video that they distributed saying like, oh yeah, they're shooting here. And this is where they like shot and, and killed her. And then this is the actual area where, um, she was shot and killed. Coming up now, hundreds, several hundreds of meters away from the the video footage and the shooting that they're referencing and not even in the same time frame down there location where journalist shireen abu akdek was killed several hundred meter meters further down the road what do they gain by taking this risk killing her like this though uh what did the american government gain by shooting at a bunch of journalists two reuters journalists and killing them from a gunship There is no risk. Israel can do whatever the fuck it wants to Palestinians, even if they're journalists, okay? There's no, there's no, they've killed nurses, dog. What are you talking about? There's no consequences in this situation. There's nothing. The Guardian, again, competing for the title of the worst newspaper in Britain. Here it is. Sorry. Al Jazeera accuses Israeli forces of killing journalists in West Bank. What an incredible way to cover this, dude. What an incredible fucking way to cover this. It's just awesome. The IDF has directly killed 52 Palestinians in the West Bank this year, triple the number of that time, this time last year.
they will never. Yeah, the New York. <laughs> Yeah, the World Trade Center collapsed in New York City during a conflict between U.S. forces and Al-Qaeda militants. Only two countries that get away with this type of shit are U.S. and Israel because of the U.S.? Exactly. <clears throat> they do this because they know they'll never have to see a semblance of consequences because they have uncritical support from Western nations like the U.S., especially the United States. Bro, watching her, there isn't a single Palestinian that doesn't know her. She was an icon of press covering Palestine ever since I can remember. May she rest in power. No passive voice for police violence, but okay for Israeli police state. Wait, avoid the vague officer involved for... Uh, shootings and other cases involving police be specific about what happened if police use the term ask how was the officer or officers involved who did the shooting this is so, this is a change that they made last year during the george floyd protest but of course uh the passive voice is still being used when it comes to israeli cops which are uh, operating under the lack of accountability created for them by again the american uh, military state so And all of the major headlines, all of the major headlines since the killing of Shirin Abu Akleh by Israeli forces earlier today, all obfuscate and, and uh, all obfuscate the blame uh, away from Israel uh, and, and literally will turn around, like will we'll turn around and even go so far as to say, including the uh, Associated Press, of course, will turn around and, and run defense for the Israeli occupying forces and will take the word of the Israeli occupying forces over the eyewitness testimony of people who were fucking shot at. Al Jazeera reporter dies following disputed incident in the West Bank. Al Jazeera reporter killed during Israeli military raid in West Bank City. Al Jazeera journalist killed during Israeli raid in West Bank. Palestinian American journalist fatally shot during Israeli raid in West Bank. The death of Shireen Abu Akleh, a well-known reporter for Al Jazeera's Arabic language channel, sparked immediate outrage in the region and beyond. Al Jazeera's Shireen Abu Akleh is killed while reporting on an Israeli raid. Who killed her? How did she die? Did she die on accident? What happened? Did she stumble onto a bullet? No. She got shot in the fucking neck. She took the necessary precautions, knowing full well that she was putting her life at risk. If she was in Ukraine, the headline would be very different. Yeah, of course the headline would be very different because Russia is America's enemy, okay? So when an, uh, a foreign adversary of America engages in horrific, bloodthirsty actions as, uh, as Russia has, then it gets not only adequate coverage, but sometimes even more than adequate coverage. Like, they'll literally be like, we need to fucking, you know, we need to kill 10 Russian babies for as many fucking... Uh, Shots fired towards, uh, you know, U.S. journalists in Russia. Like, they get whipped up into a frenzy. And by the way, that does not fucking absolve Russia of the sin of, of invading Ukraine, okay? They are completely uh, in the wrong for that. I'm not even making any sort of defense. I'm not running defense for that at all. Uh, contrary to popular opinion. I know that people get, like, super fucking triggered and immediately go oh, wow, like, this must mean that you're defending Russia. It's like, no, you only would feel that way if you think I'm defending Israel or defending America in any meaningful capacity in any of these situations. When I compare something, when I compare a country's actions to America or Israel, okay, that is the worst thing I can do to the country, okay? Because these are, these are bloodthirsty nations, okay? These are nations that get away with so much bloodshed. Understand that. But when I make a comparison to Russia... Or when I make a when I when I look at Russia's actions and say, "Wow, this really reminds me of uh, things that the IDF does," or "This really reminds me of the things that the United States does," understand that I'm that's the worst comparison I can make for Russia. 
And of course, it's always a clash. It's always a clash. It's a two-sided situation. It's incredible how quickly the media turned murders and massacres into mere clashes when it suits their agenda. At least one dead white nationalist ignite Virginia clashes. Chilean protesters decry inequality clash with police. Death toll rose to 11 as authorities try to restore order. Bolivia's crisis turns deadly again as five killed in clash. Al Jazeera journalists are killed during clashes in the West Bank. By the way, the add more insult to injury, she's from the declining Palestinian Christian community. Not only did we lose an icon, the Palestinian Christians had a big loss today. Yeah, it's always a clash. Now, let's hear what Jen Psaki uh, had to say about this. Let's hear the Psaki bomb on this issue. Another, this is an American journalist, okay? This is a Palestinian American journalist that was uh, violently and brutally and mercilessly executed. Okay? So let's hear what, uh, you know, Jen Psaki had to say about it, the Psaki bomb. We are heartbroken to learn uh, of the killing of the Palestinian-American journalist Shireen Abu Akhlek and injures, uh, and injuries to producer Ali Samoudi today in the West Bank. We send our deepest condolences to her family, friends, and strongly condemn her killing. Shireen was a reporting legend followed closely by those who care about the region and is mourned by all who know her. Just last week, like, who did it? Where did it happen? Like, well, how did it happen? Thoughts and prayers. And also billions of dollars to, uh, of course, the uh, state of Israel to, like, literally continue doing this, okay? And also, uh, always will run defense at the UN Security Council to ensure that, like, no such, you know, no such... Uh, uh, no, no consequences ever come to Israel for, for these actions, okay? Just last week, World Press Freedom Day marked the role journalists play in its free flow of information, ideas, opinions, including dissenting ones, as essential as, uh, as being essentially inclusive and tolerant societies, it's heart-wrenching to see the killing of a journalist one week later. Um, for the record, I just want to mention something else here, okay? I want to mention something else here as well. Uh, uh, this, is the he this is the press secretary still, before she goes to fucking uh, MSNBC, of course, to get a nice little job. This is the press secretary of a government that is still very actively hunting down and unjustifiably holding Julian Assange in contempt of some court for a crime that he did not commit for being, uh, uh, you know, for being responsible for the, the website that published hacked and sometimes, uh, you know, declassified data. So remember that. Like, it's bullshit. Bullshit that she's saying this. Just last week, World Press Freedom Day marked the role journalists play on the free flow of information. We call for an immediate and thorough investigation of full accountability. Investigating attacks on independent media and prosecuting those responsible are paramount importance. We will continue to promote media freedom and protect journalists' ability to do their jobs without fear of violence, threats to their lives or safety, or unjust detention. Unjust detention, Julian Assange. Her, her death is a tragic loss and an affront to media freedom everywhere. No mention of who is responsible. But you don't want to hear them actually say who is responsible because when, mark my words, uh, there is a likelihood that when they do come out with who is responsible, it will probably be uh, somewhere along the lines of the Palestinians were lying and also uh, it's, it's actually the Palestinians themselves that were responsible. Anyway, so we already talked about that, but Selim did uh, this uh, quick on-the-ground coverage on it. And for the record, this isn't new. Israel has had a long history of using fake videos, images, or ones taken out of context to evade responsibility for his actions is 100% true. One of the most laughable, one of the most comical, one of the most comical approaches in this matter has even been so far as to what was it, Bella Hadid, who was... Uh, was at a fucking protest it was bella hadid right she was at a fucking protest it was just like a pro-palestinian protest and people were saying from the river to the sea palestine will be free and they literally made it seem like in the subtitles they made it seem like uh 
uh, uh, that they were saying, like, throw the Jew in the sea or something. No one was saying that. It was very clearly them saying, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And uh, they they subtitled it as, like, throw the Jew in the sea. Look at Bella Hadid, claiming that Bella Hadid was saying, throw the Jew in the sea. Um, that was cool. That was a fun little thing. They do shit like that all the time. And they're not bad at propaganda, okay? It, it, they're not. Israel is not bad at propaganda. Israel's very good at propaganda. And that's ki they're kind of a victim of their own success in this situation. Uh, it, for so long, um, Israel's been so good at, uh, at, at basically controlling the flow of information in the Western world uh, with respect to uh, its, its uh, you know, crimes against humanity and its mistreatment of Palestinians that it's on autopilot at this point. So it, it, there's never been... Um, there has never, ever been an, an instance where, where the, the public opinion on this matter started turning uh, in favor of like the recognition of Palestinians as human beings. This is like a very new thing. Okay? It's a very new thing. Only in the past couple of years have Palestinians been seen as like human beings. And even then, uh, regardless of our recognition of the humanity of Palestinians, the human status of Palestinians, uh, oftentimes we are still very quick to overlook the crimes that they are uh, subjected to by the Israeli occupying forces. Um, anyway, let's continue. Israel later, after this image, uh, after this video came out from Betzalem, Israel later walked back its accusations against Palestinians with, an, with its army chief, Aviv Kahavi, asserting that at the moment it is not possible to determine from which fire Abu Akhlek was killed. Kahavi said the Israeli army would hold a self-investigation to clarify the facts and present them in full as soon as possible. So there's that too. So they went from... Um, the Israeli foreign ministry even tweeted out saying, stating, okay... Uh, there was no claim that the gunfire in the clip killed journalist Shirin Abu Akleh. Rather, that Palestinian terrorists were firing indiscriminately and that they identified shooting down someone that looked to them like a soldier, i.e. perhaps wearing a vest and a helmet. This video shows Palestinian terrorists firing indiscriminately and likely hitting an Al Jazeera journalist Shirin uh, Abu Akleh. A free and fair press is fundamental. They literally fucking straight up said, look at these Palestinian terrorists firing at this journalist. And, and as soon as they were fucking called out for lying about it, they're like, oh, we would have never said that. We would have never said that. That's crazy. Who, who could have said such a thing? Not us, of course. You know, not us. That's not true. Sounds a lot like Ukraine shot themselves. Yes, and this is why it is fucking my coverage on Ukraine on this matter has literally always made these comparisons because Russia, this is why I always say Russia is doing IDF shit. Russia is doing America shit. They do it all the fucking time. This is just like what this is what the the superpower in the fucking conflict does. Exactly, exactly what I'm saying. Their entire iOS play is to muddy the water and release the truth once people no longer care. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Huh. We were wearing flak jackets clearly marked as press. Journalist Shatya Hanaisha bears witness to the cold-blooded murder of Al Jazeera Shirin Abu Akhlek by Israeli snipers in Jinin, north of the Occupy West Bank this morning. There were three eyewitnesses. One of them was shot. And survived. Okay? And the immediate reaction from, uh, from all of the Israeli propaganda outlets was to say, Oh, it's fucking bullshit. The Palestinians did it. Or uh, they deserved it. Do y'all understand how scary it is that the media brainwash people into believing that villagers with stones are oppressing a nuclear superpower? Exactly. I mean, but, you know, when you can, when you can get to, uh, people to believe that, then it's over. It's a wrap. Um... Yeah, we investigated ourselves type beat is, is always famously uh, very successful when the cops do that as well, when they investigate themselves. You literally said Russia could copy strike Israel and the USA? No, I said Israel and the USA could copy strike Russia. 
or it's it's fucking ridiculous uh Correction, an earlier tweet misstated Al Jazeera's comments about the death of Shireen Abu Akleh. The network said she was killed by Israeli forces in the West Bank city of Jenin. It did not say she was killed during clashes between Israeli forces and Palestinian gunmen. Yeah, there. look at that correction. Nice, dude. Shireen Abu Akleh, a Palestinian-American journalist for Al Jazeera, was shot and killed in the West Bank early Wednesday, the Palestinian health ministry said. The circumstances around the, the shooting were not immediately clear. They were immediately clear. What is this? Do you think it's more of a, I don't believe the American government, but there's nothing I can do? What do you mean? Anyway, I'm going to cover a couple different angles on this as well. Um, so, uh, meanwhile, Itamar Ben Gvir, by the way, a far-right Israeli lawmaker notorious for praising violence against Palestinians, justified the killing and said this when terrorists fire on our soldiers in jenin they must return fire with full force even if these are there are journalists in the area from al jazeera who often deliberately stand in the middle of the battle and disturb the soldiers to get a better understanding of like how fucking reactionary uh, israel is and how reactionary some of the israeli politicians are there you go it's like dude it's little america you know what i mean she was reportedly injured in the fire by the terrorist, Ben Gvir also claimed, but in any case, full backing to the heroic Israeli army soldiers. U.S. Ambassador to Israel Thomas Nide said he was very sad to learn the death of the American and Palestinian journalist Abu Akleh. That's what Tom Nide said. I encourage a thorough investigation into the circumstances of her death of the, and the injury of at least another journalist today in Jenin. This gentle tone contrasts with how U.S. officials reacted in March when American filmmaker Brett Renaud was killed in Ukraine. Um, I mean, that's, it's wild that they're even fucking mentioning it. So, uh, so that's, at least that's like somewhat positive. Although the circumstances of Renault killing were unclear, State Department spokesperson Ned Price immediately denounced when he called a gruesome example of Kremlin's indiscriminate actions. In February, the State Department called on Israel to conduct a thorough criminal investigation after Israeli soldiers were previous, the previous month attacked Omar Assad, an elderly Palestinian American man, leaving him dead. The U.S. demand to investigate Assad's Killing followed a quick Israeli internal investigation that gave three soldiers involved a light slap on the wrist. Washington, which provides Israel with billions of dollars of weapons each year, has no history of following up with its demands and measures to hold Israel accountable. Uh, here is the whitewash mechanism. I don't think we killed her, Ran Kachav, a spokesperson for the Israeli army, told the public broadcaster. We proposed the Palestinians to open a swift joint probe. If we indeed killed her, we'll take responsibility, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So... The reason why this investigation uh, is, is dog shit is because historically it's always been dog shit. They immediately start off by saying Palestinians actually killed her. And uh, as a man in the sun is correctly pointing out here, that the shooting was actually then an investigation is concluded and the shooting was in accordance to the rules of engagement. And also then uh, if they go a buck wild enough, they'll go so far as to say she was actually a body shield. She put herself in danger on purpose to make Israel look bad slash she was being used as a body shield. Uh, and then, and then they'll, and this obviously by this stage though, it's like already gone. It's long gone. People don't give a fuck about it at that point. You know what I mean? Like the Western world does not give a fuck about it at that point. Um, and there's a reason why the Israeli humanitarian mission Betzalem announced it would stop cooperating with the Israeli military investigations because Israeli military investigations they termed it a whitewash mechanism. The renowned Israeli human rights group added that 25 years of fruitless filing complaints on behalf of Palestinians brought us to the realization that there is no longer any point in pursuing justice and defending human rights by working with a system whose real function is measured by its ability to continue to successfully cover up unlawful acts and protect perpetrators. Okay? Israeli forces attacked journalists covering the Great March of Return, the mass unarmed protests in Gaza that started in 2018. Two journalists, Yasser Murtaja and Ahmed Abu Hussein, were killed and dozens were injured during its bombing campaign in Gaza this time last year. Remember, Israel deliberately targeted buildings uh, housing dozens of local and international media offices. Remember, they fucking literally bombed the building that the Associated Press was in and then turned around and said, there's Hamas in there. Hamas was there, actually. We know of it. We know Hamas was there. 
And not only that, not only that, but then the rest of the world this time around was like actually turning on, on uh, the, the unconditional support they usually offer. The Western media was even turning on the unconditional support they normally offer to the Israeli coverage of their uh, war crimes. And they said, okay, show us proof. No proof was given. And yet to this day, no proof has been given as to why they bombed a fucking massive building in Gaza that supposedly, that, that the Associated Press was in and numerous other international, uh, the numerous other international journalism outlets were in. And to this fucking day, no proof. Almost one year ago today, Israeli warplanes leveled a building that housed the offices of the uh, Associated Press in Al Jazeera. Israel claimed Hamas military in intelligence was using the building but never offered any evidence. Israel, which brags about its intelligence capabilities, later ludicrously claimed it had no major world media organizations were housed in the building. An Israeli air raid also killed journalist Yusuf Abu Hussein, 32, in his apartment in Gaza City. He was a popular broadcaster with the voice of Al-Aqsa Radio. Reporters Without Borders last May said it condemns Israel's disproportionate use of force against journalists who should under no circumstance be treated as parties to the armed conflict. And last month, International Criminal Court received a complaint about alleging war crimes against journalists by the Israeli occupation forces. The complaint concerns the systemic targeting of four Palestinian media workers who were killed or maimed by Israeli snipers while covering demonstrations in Gaza, according to the International Federation of Journalists. Except nothing will happen. Nothing has happened and nothing will continue to happen. As a matter of fact, these kinds of investigations are oftentimes used by the likes of Ben Shapiro here in the United States of America to claim like that there is a, an, an unjustifiable microscope uh, under uh, Israel and that all of these other countries do war crimes and that nobody gives a shit. Except that's not the case. That's not the case. Plenty of people give a shit about the war crimes of America. Plenty of people give a shit about the war crimes that Saudi Arabia is engaging in. Plenty of people give a shit about the war crimes that Russia is engaging in as well. And obviously, when Russia engages in that, the entire Western world's like, all right, fuck those guys. Let's cover it. Let's, uh, let's get some kind of justice here. But when Saudi Arabia does it, you avoid it because it's who is the victim? People in Yemen. Nobody gives a shit, right? And it's being done with our weapons, with our weapons of war, with our fucking targeting systems, with our refueling systems, okay? So when we, we are responsible for the famine in Yemen, we are responsible in Israel, this, this violence against the Palestinian people. And it's never, it's never covered. Okay? It's never covered. It's never actually, uh, it never amounts to anything. Um, here's Abdullah Fayyad, uh, writer uh, at the Globe Opinion uh, and the editor who's on the editorial board of the Boston Globe, who's a Pulitzer Prize finalist. He says, what a strange revealing thing for an Israeli military spokesman to say as a preemptive defense of killing a Palestinian journalist. Kochav described Abu Akleh as filming and working for a media outlet amidst armed Palestinians. They're armed with cameras, if you'll permit me to say so. Yes, that's right. It's a weapon. And it will never amount to anything? Of course not. Um, here it is. The Israeli gunfire didn't stop, although Shireen was laying on the ground. This is one of the uh, eyewitness accounts from uh, first-hand eyewitness accounts of the people that were shot at. Okay. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll through this. The gunfire didn't even stop. People were trying to and then pull it out. Okay. It's just... Uh, sorry. Okay. They're not showing anything. Okay. Good. Here. The Israeli gunfire didn't stop, although Shireen was lying on the ground. The gunfire didn't even stop. People could also reach her from. People couldn't also reach her from the other side. People were trying to reach her. Even the private vehicle that took her to the hospital was hardly able to reach her due to the continued gunfire. One young man jumped off a wall and pulled me out. He then pulled Shireen out. 
This proved to me that we journalists were being deliberately targeted. We were a group of journalists. We were wearing the press gear. Shireen was even wearing a press marked helmet. She was wearing a helmet. This means he who fired at her was intending to shoot her in an area of her body that's uncovered. I consider what happened an assassination of all of us journalists in my colleague Mujahed and I tried to reach her it, we could have we would have directly been targeted by the gunfire people were warning us that the Israeli snipers were not far away from us we were opposite to the building where the Israeli snipers were positioned this man was present there and he told us that the snipers were there he was seeing them the Israeli soldiers were opposite to us and were seeing us. We were standing in an area where the soldiers could identify us as journalists. I told one of my colleagues, let's go out of this area. But he insisted that we remained uh, so that... Uh, hold on. He insisted that we remain in the same area so the soldiers could identify us as journalists. And then we would advance. We stood in an area opposite to the Israeli soldiers. We stood up as a group and then we advanced. The gunfire started after we reached an area where we could not pull back. This means that if the gunfire was not aimed at our killing, then we the snipers. Why am I reading the subtitles? Because not everyone is fucking able to watch. Some people are just listening. You ask this all the time. Al Jazeera in the USA Department ISIS briefing and questioning. Right now about the killing of our colleague, let's listen. As being essential to inclusive and tolerant societies. It is heart-wrenching to see the killing of another journalist just one week later. We call for an immediate and thorough investigation and full accountability. Investigating attacks on independent media and prosecuting those responsible are of paramount. So before we get into this, like, uh, I, I do want to talk about the accountability aspect of it again. Okay. I want to talk about this, uh, you know, investigation. First and foremost, the Israeli police went to Shireen Abu Akhlik's home. And uh, one of the things that they did was to ask to take down the Palestinian flags hung outside. There was a big commotion there as well. So they like ransack through the fucking house or try to ransack through the fucking house. So remember that. Remember that. Okay. Understand that that's what they did. After they fucking executed uh, this journalist, their, their, immediate, uh, their immediate move was to go and fucking, uh, you know, go to our house. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, and then also on top of that, so they, they have now since then have uh, backtracked on the uh, initial claim that Abu Akhlik might have been shot by a Palestinian gunman. And the IDF chief of staff general Kakavi said in a statement that at the moment it is not possible to determine from which the fire Abu Akhlik was killed from. Um, and here it is. OK, this is one of the reasons why uh, the Israeli investigation, the Israeli investigation conducted on on like Israel's own occupying force is oftentimes just fucking bullshit. Here is Adala obtained video footage of police investigating the murder of a Palestinian citizen, Musa Hasuna, in Lod during the violent May 2021 events. The footage indicates that the Israeli politicians pressured police to close the files against the five Jewish Israeli suspects. This is like uh, the, the, the suspects that aren't even... Uh, these are like, like random citizens that are fucking engaging in acts of violence, not the fucking IDF, okay? Adala appealed the prosecutor's closure on the case on behalf of Hasuna's family. The police conducted a negligent, flawed investigation with the ultimate aim of closing the cases and clearing the suspects. Palestinian citizens were met with police brutality and armed Israeli Jewish vigilante groups. This is the other part of it, okay? Uh, this is the other part of the fucking uh, the awfulness, the, the, the bloodshed, is that it's not almost, it's not always... It's not always just the IDF, the occupying forces that uh, engage in this kind of brutality. 
they also allow citizens to engage in this kind of brutality and they defend them. This, of course, happens uh, in the West Bank, right? The West Bank is where uh, there is state-sanctioned violence. There's direct state violence, but then there's also state-sanctioned violence where they let, uh, you know, uh, some of the... Uh, some of the Israeli people go and blow off some steam by beating the living shit out of Palestinian kids in uh, uh, street clashes. And this doesn't just happen in the West Bank. This happens internally within Israel as well, okay? In, in the full-blown occupied territories of Israel, not just West Bank, but this happens in territories inside of Israel where there are Palestinian Arabs that have Israeli citizenship the, the, the lucky few that are treated, again, as second-class citizens. Like, Lod is a, a city inside of Israel. Um, in May 2021, Palestinian citizens were met with police brutality and armed Israeli-Jewish vigilante groups to conduct a, the conduct of politicians in this case shows that the groups had their full support were even seen as a force multiplier for authorities. The appeal was filed by Adala's attorney, Nariman Shah, uh, Shahadeh Zoabi, who is uh, representing Musa Hasuna's family. Here it is. <laughs> Investigator one says, the head of the weapons lab told me he won't check the weapons unless charges are filed. <laughs> Listen, he's crazy. I told him, don't you understand that in order to decide whether or not to file charges, we need to know who fired the lethal shot. He said, you have the suspect's testimonies. Investigator 2 says, is he serious? Investigator 1 says, I just had a huge argument with him. Investigator 2 says, I must be dreaming. People have gone completely insane. Investigator 1 says, listen, it's crazy. I told him, okay, understand. We're together on it. And he says, we pay a lot of money for these tests. The tests in this case are my last priority. <laughs> Investigator 2 says, oh, really? He should tell that to the minister who is calling every 10 minutes asking for updates on the case. <laughs> and Investigator 1 says, I told him that some of the detained suspects claim that they fired their weapon into the air. We need to, we need to check their testimonies and we finally, and we need to finally know. The bullet removed from the body from which weapon it was fired. For the record, they they didn't do that. Like this is a, a just in the eyes of like in the eyes of the Israeli uh, occupying forces, it's not worth the the uh, the the dollar value to figure out because they openly admit that they were shooting their guns in the air, but they just could not fucking figure out whose weapon uh, the 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 bullet was fired from. Oops. Like, they know someone got fucking killed with a gun. They know who was there with their guns. The, the people that were there with their guns openly admit that they fired their guns, but they just simply cannot conduct an investigation into who was actually uh, the one responsible for firing the gun. Wouldn't hit the top of the bulletproof helmet then? No, 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 no. This is a separate. That video is from a separate investigation. That video is from a separate investigation that was basically folded, okay, and shelved. That video, the reason why I showed that is because I want to show you that, like, the Israeli investigation into crimes committed by even Israeli citizens against Palestinian or Arab Israeli citizens is rarely ever rarely ever getting like the actual full-blown uh, uh you know investigative tools of the authorities but then also on top of that the the idf investigations are even less conclusive like they just don't care they will turn around and say oh it was the proper rules of engagement they'll turn around and say this is you know uh, we are the most moral army they'll fucking cr they'll cry about it afterwards like oh man we are really sad uh, that, you know, we were forced to kill so many of these innocent civilians, I mean, that were all actually uh, meat shields, defend Hamas. 
I join countless others in mourning the death of Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, who was killed by the Israeli military while on assignment. This is what Congressman Andre Carson in the Indiana 7th District said. The U.S. must hold the Israeli government accountable for its and all other acts of unjust violence it commits. This is crazy to hear, by the way. And then, of course, look at that. Pro-Israel and proud. Zero tolerance for anti-Semitism. Julie Lenar says, Fact 1. It remains unclear who killed Shirin Abu Akleh. Fact 2. Israel called for a joint and transparent investigation. The Palestinians rejected to offer. Fact 3. Blaming Israel prematurely for her death has nothing to do with respect responsible journalism. It's propaganda. So why the fuck are you blaming fucking uh, uh, Palestinians then? Why the fuck did the Israeli government blame Palestinians? Did she write a fucking article about that? I think not. She probably didn't go so far as to say, Hey, that's really fucked up. Uh, I can't believe that uh, Naftali Bennett would like show a completely unrelated video from a, a, a different area. And, and go so far as to fucking lay the blame of Palestinian journalists at the hands of Palestinians and then uh, have to backtrack immediately after. Okay, this doesn't have any... Here, the journalist above details... I'm not gonna... I'm just gonna go through the details here because, like, uh, this is, you know, th this is in Arabic and there's no translation there. Okay? The journalist above details what happened. At 6.30 a.m., a vehicle carrying a group of journalists arrives at the first roundabout in the Jinnian refugee camp. There were other... They were there to cover an Israeli raid on the camp and a number of Israeli snipers were stationed on the rooftops. Shireen Abu Akleh got out of the vehicle wearing a helmet and a flak jacket clearly marked with press. An Israeli sniper shot her, hitting just below her ear. She fell near a wall and the shooting continued, hindering other journos from reaching her. Okay? Barbaric. Brutal. Savagery. Okay? Here it is, by the way, the location where the journalist Shirin Abu Akleh was killed and the location of the armed Palestinian firing in the video distributed by the Israeli army, for the record. I've gotten flack from college professors and friends comparing the situation to the Holocaust because it's supposedly anti-Semitic. They use their reference to Israel. I'm sorry that what was never again supposed to mean then. There is ethnic cleansing happening at the systemic level. Holocaust is like a, a singular event. But calling this ethnic cleansing is appropriate. I, I, and anyone who runs defense uh, against that is just simply trying to shift the attention away from the horrific crimes against humanity. Israel is an apartheid state. They mention that they are an apartheid state. They openly state that they are an apartheid state. Uh, so I don't know why the fuck uh, we have to, you know, whitewash that shit. The case I remember is when they ran other over the activist girl with a bulldozer. Oh, in like the 2000s. Yeah, back then Israel was also... Back then, the Netanyahu government was uh, not openly stating their... Oh, the Palestinian authorities denied that Israel approached them? Wait, what the fuck? Member of the executive committee of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. We hold the occupation government responsible for the assassination of journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. May God have mercy on her. We deny that the prime minister of the occupation government announced that they were heading to the PA to conduct an investigation into her assassination. We reconfirm that the Palestinian Authority will transfer this file to the International Criminal Court. Shane Bibi missed that plane ride. No, it's not that he missed the plane ride. It's that Israel, unfortunately, has, uh, has a rule against having two, uh, having next of kin uh, on, the same, on the same mission. That's why he survived and his brother died. You know, that's the IDF uh, Special Forces protocol is that two brothers 
or the, the you know two brothers or immediate family members can't operate on the same mission because if they both die then you know their family lineage is done unfortunately um okay No, no, no. We're talking about uh, we're talking about a, a, a mission that uh, where Bibi Netanyahu's brother died in um, uh, what was it? Is is in Africa? Where they? Uh, was it Entebbe? Yeah, the the um, the raid on. Uh, the raid on the Entebbe airport where Yonatan Yoni Netanyahu uh, died in Operation Entebbe, which uh, Bibi Netanyahu was also in the part of the uh, special forces. Like he was supposed to be on the mission, but um, they, uh, they told him that he could not. Anyway. What's crazy is where people don't think it's wrong for Israel to do this, oh, but it's right. Oh, come on, dude. Let's finish this uh, here. Uh, this is the story. Uh, we already we already mentioned it here. There's some more coverage on here. I'm going to finish this up in a second. Forces. Israel's prime minister called the death unfortunate and blamed it on Palestinians, claiming they were, quote, firing indiscriminately. A second journalist was shot in the back, but survived. Now, the U.S. ambassador to Israel is now calling for a thorough investigation. There have been near daily... <laughs> Bro, why the fuck did you send us two asshats from Pennsylvania to run the country? Yeah, that was... Listen, motherfucker. You, you, voted, you voted for him. Homies in Israel were like, this guy from Pennsylvania, that's my guy. Okay. Imagine, dude, imagine looking at a guy who fucking looking at a guy from Pennsylvania and being like, this is the dude that's that should run the country. Pretty, pretty solid. For those of you who don't know, we're talking about Benjamin Netanyahu. I wonder how many people know that. Like, I, I wonder how many people know that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is uh, from Pennsylvania. I mean, look at this Washington Post article. Why Benjamin Netanyahu is so tough. He's from Philadelphia. I'm glad to be in Philadelphia, Benjamin Netanyahu said when addressing a graduating class at the University of Pennsylvania in 1999. A pretty good portion of my intellectual capital was developed in this city. You are aware that Israel's prime minister, due to, the address, due, to address, uh, due to address Congress in a historic joint session today, spent four years in the city of brotherly love as a teenager. I mean, to be fair, a lot of Israelis aren't actually from Israel for reasons, Lamont. Yeah, I mean, yes. Okay, let's continue. Finish this off. Daily raids in the West Bank amid a series of deadly attacks inside Israel with Janine a main flashpoint. Now, on a purely personal... Dude, this is, this is great. This is, look at the footage. Like, I mean, there's no TOS here. I just want to show you. Well, actually, there is big TOS here. Attacks inside Israel. Notice, notice the terms of service violations I'm showing you currently. I don't even know how, why Twitch is allowing me to show this. What you are seeing is a bunch of violent, violent Palestinians with incredibly deadly weapons that are hidden inside of rocks. Those are actually not rocks. They are uh, uh, small thermonuclear grade uh, explosive devices. But it's actually, it looks like a stone because of the incredible technology that the, the Palestinians have. Yes. With Janine. Notice, notice this. Notice Flash this. Uh, now. 
Wow. What? Wow. They are straight up throwing nuclear grade ballistic weapons at these vehicles, these heavily armed, uh, these, these heavily armored vehicles. You see that? Personal note, I knew Shereen. We used to work together in Jerusalem and she was a kind and generous colleague, always looking to give voice to those who were so rarely heard from. But more than anything, she was a pioneer, a household name across the Arab world. Shereen started her career in the 1990s when there were few Arab women reporting on issues that affected their communities. She truly inspired a generation of other Arab women to do the same and will be greatly missed. Yeah. I love that. Wait, did someone say a stone can actually kill someone? Yeah, you know what also can kill someone, you fucking dumb bitch? Uh five, five, six rounds and and like all of the guns and all of the fucking actual artillery and shelling that the Israeli occupying forces use on a regular basis on unsuspecting Palestinians for the crime of living inside of the world's largest open-air prison in Gaza or the crime of living in the occupied territory of West Bank. So that's, that's you know, what's more likely? Why doesn't the American military invade Iraq with fucking rocks then, huh? If rocks are so fucking solid as a, as a tool, if rocks are so good and so valid, why is the American military using deplete, depleted uranium shells? They could have just used rocks. Like the fucking Beast Titan, dude. What's up? Why is America not using the Beast Titan? He killed so many with, with rocks by throwing them. He had a really good throwing arm. Why, why is it the American military doing that, huh? You ever think about that? Fucking stupid. How does this word how do these words come out of your fucking mouth, dude? To be fair, uranium is just spicy rock. Yeah, exactly. Did you cover that the head of ADL deemed that all criticism of Israel is anti-Semitism? Dude, whatever. ADL's position has been that for a very long time. They say anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism, okay? Who cares? It's the fucking bullshit.